Please join in singing our gathering hymn, Table of Plenty, found in your online worship aid. Sunday in Ordinary Time. We continue to pray for you and for all of your family members. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirits. My dear friends, mindful of our sinfulness, we now ask the Lord for his pardon and his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. 
On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus, again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored this invitation and went away one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, and he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, in our Gospel reading, we have the third parable in a series of parables that we have heard over the past few Sundays, where Jesus confronts the Pharisees and the elders of his faith community, trying to educate them about the kingdom of heaven. This can be a challenging parable for a lot of people because it contains some elements of violence that are very difficult to square with the teachings of Jesus. So what I'd like to do is just go through the parable, looking at the various elements, understanding them in the context of the times, but then relating them to our lives and to what it means for us today. The parable is a story of a king who invites the people of his kingdom to a banquet, celebrating the marriage of his son. He sends out his messengers throughout his realm, and they have a hard time getting the guests to accept the invitation. Some are just too distracted by other things. Their work is more important to them. They want to get back to their fields or to whatever business they are involved in. Then there are some who outright reject the invitation in a really violent way. They go so far as to attack the messengers and murder them. The king gets so angry with these people that he sends his soldiers out to kill them. Most scholars believe that Jesus is prophesizing about the future destruction of the Jewish temple, which will occur in the year A.D. 70 when the Romans lay laced lay waste to Jerusalem. But for us today, the story of the king's messengers is about us as disciples. We too are called to be messengers that invite people to the kingdom of heaven. And yet we know that if we discuss our faith with other people or invite them to worship with us, there are some people who will say, I'm too busy, or I'm, I want to watch football, or I want to go golfing, 
or I've got some business matter to attend to, or something else that is more important than embracing the kingdom of heaven. And there are those people who are really hostile to our message, who treat us in a dismissive way, or disparage our faith, or even disparage a belief in God in general. Being a messenger that invites others to the banquet of the Lord can be very challenging. Now, in the parable, this, the king sends out a second round of invita invitations to any, anyone the messengers can find, either good or evil, which suggests that the first round of invitations were sent to a more select group, perhaps the socially acceptable, the wealthy, the more prominent, a better class of people. But now, the king says, invite anyone, both the good and the bad, the beautiful people and those who society deems unworthy. And that's when he fills his banquet hall. Jesus is telling us that the kingdom is for everyone, sinners and saints and everyone in between. Jesus is always reaching out to that person who has been shunted aside, rejected by society, the tax collector, the leper, the prostitute. And we, as his disciples, are called to do the same, to welcome anyone. As his disciples, we need to carry the message of the kingdom out to the margins of society, not just to the people we feel comfortable. The final interesting part of the story is this issue with the guest who shows up not wearing a wedding garment. It would be as if you hosted a wedding, asked everybody to wear formal attire, and then somebody showed up in torn jeans, sneakers, and a t-shirt. This guest has answered the call, has answered the invitation, but did he really take it very seriously? He shows up in a way that's almost disrespectful of the invitation. God calls everyone, from the most powerful to the most powerless, but he expects us all to treat this call seriously, to live a good Christian life, to come to the banquet of heaven adorned in a life of virtue and a life of holiness. And the violence in this parable shows that there are consequences for rejecting God's call or not treating it seriously. The invitees who kill the king's messengers are themselves killed. And the wedding guest who shows up with shabby clothes and a shabby attitude is tied up and cast out into the darkness. God invites us all to the kingdom of heaven. He calls everyone. He only asks that we show up and do our best to take this call seriously by living out a good Christian life. Together we now confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our prayers up to God, whom we trust to fully supply whatever we need. For the unity of the church, that all believers may share in the feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel accepted or unworthy due to their circumstances, hardships, or identity, that they may always realize God's inclusive invitation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who dedicate their lives to the welfare of others, including all medical personnel, for our first responders, for priests who have answered the call to serve those afflicted for the virus, and for family members who serve as caregivers, that they persevere in spite of discouragement or weariness as they continue to care for our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing and recovery of all those suffering from COVID-19, and for all who are homebound or suffering from illness or injury and cannot join us at this feast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nourished in this life by the Eucharist, that they may be raised upon the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For those for whom we promise to pray, for those who have no one to pray for them by name, and for the intentions of those remembered in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Polly and Fred Caramanica. Edmund and Mary D, Marion and William Fandel, Giacchino Di Gregorio, Gregorio, and Joseph Susie, for whom this Mass is offered. For all our beloved dead, especially Michael Jarmusic, whose funeral was celebrated this past week, and for all who have died recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we conclude our petitions with a prayer for the year of the Eucharist. God, the Father of love and source of all life in unity, you are always present to us just as we are. Throughout this year of the Eucharist, we pray that you strengthen the faith of all your beloved people. Grant us a renewed sense of your Son's presence in the consecrated bread and wine at Mass. And through our Holy Communion with Christ, May we become what we receive. May we be Jesus' hands and feet and body through which you bless the world.
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 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 Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so now with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with 
blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements for you. Please continue to register for Mass each week by Thursday at 12 noon. Everyone must wear a mask or face covering in church for the foreseeable future and observe social distancing directions. While Linfield continues to be listed in the higher risk zone for COVID-19, we will take everyone's temperature as you enter the church until further notice. Cardinal Sean continues to lift the Sunday Mass obligation only for those who are ill or those who have underlying health conditions that make them vulnerable to disease. If you are not feeling well or in frail health, we encourage you to stay at home and watch Mass on our website. Otherwise, we invite you to join us for one of our in-person Masses. Our churches are safe and we practice all the recommended guidelines to protect everyone in attendance. Next weekend, October 17th and 18th, after all the Masses, the Knights of Columbus will be collecting donations to fund their works of charity for the Linfield community. Your financial support is greatly needed in this time of the pandemic. November is traditionally the month in which we commemorate the faithful departed with a Mass of Remembrance. This year we are inviting parishioners to submit the name or names of their loved ones who died from November 2019 to the present by October 31st. The names will be read at Masses on the weekend of November 7th and 8th. Please return the names to Janine Sano in the parish office. More details are in the bulletin. And finally, we thank you for your continued support through the offertory contributions. These offerings make it possible for us to pay for our utilities and other necessary expenses. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God now bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, City of God, found in your online worship aids. Mm -hmm. 